Hey friends, thanks for joining me, Jim Baroud, to hear a few insights from leaders who represent our innovation ecosystem. Today's chat is with Steve Levine, the editor of The Electric, an exclusive premium publication at The Information on batteries and electric vehicles. I am uh, Steve Levine. I am the editor of The Electric, which is a newsletter covering uh, EVs and batteries we do the whole chain starting at the mines, metals mines, and all the way through uh, components of batteries, batteries, EVs, and the big geopolitics. Um, I, I uh, have run this newsletter for, for three years. Um, I've been watching the battery EV space for 13 years. I started uh, 2010 when the U.S. and China first began their uh, their race um, to, to uh, own EVs own batteries. As you know, the U.S. gave up around 2012 or 2013. China kept going, and now we're all suffering. Um, and uh, I come from an oil uh, background. Um, originally, I, I covered the oil industry. I was based in the stands in the former Soviet Union. My first book is about the oil race out there on the Caspian Sea. Uh, between Russia and, and the United States. And, uh, you know, I've been a journalist forever. And uh, I've got a, 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 my most recent book, The Powerhouse, is about uh, uh, the race to invent a, a, a super battery. Um, is that enough? That's great. That, that, that gives All us right. a real good perspective. And uh, right. you're the smartest person I know covering this field. So I'm, I'm really delighted to have you on the podcast, uh, Steve. And so tell us where we are, you know, state of play, give us a big picture view of what's going on. Yeah. So um, I, I can just continue where, where I was on that, um, on that um, uh, chronology, because that, that, that really starts it out, you know, that the, the race, this race we're looking at now began around 2009, 2010, the U S Put two, two and a half, uh, two and a half billion dollars into, but uh, uh, the you know tr trying to set up a battery supply chain. China did the same thing around 2012, 2013. We stopped um, basically because of po the same sort of uh, partisan politics we've got now, but a different version of it. And uh, but China kept going, and so what we have right now is China owns the battery supply chain. Uh, there, here's my cat. Okay, she decided she did want to be part of this. Okay, and and, um, uh, and EVs, so the, the battery supply chain and EVs, and th this is Luna, you can say hello, hello. Hey Luna. And so, so um, uh, and, and uh, you know, in, in the Biden administration, the Inflation Reduction Act, this this um, uh, gets underestimated in peacetime. The United States has never put this scale of money behind and in in uh, in industrial uh, project. Um, you know, people usually say, you know, IRA biggest industrial policy since World War II. No, since ever there isn't one. Right, not uh, not even the railroads in the 19th century. So, uh, so we are trying to get in the game. The Chinese own the 2020s. We just are starting at zero. We're trying when 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 we put money behind uh, factories, we're trying to get into the 2030s. Uh, that's what that's all about. And uh, and and what the besides Tesla, right? We have Tesla. But besides Tesla, basically what you had was um, car companies, you know, U.S. companies, European companies, thinking that all they had to do was make an electric car, and then people would would uh, would buy them. No, that wasn't that. That's not it at all. So that's where we are. Where we are, where consumers are ho hum about and are 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 am. Ambivalent about EVs, it's because of that, right? They're not buying 
they're not, they're, they're not being presented with something they want to buy, right? Nor at the price point, nor is there the infrastructure. So yeah, you got to have all that. We need to have all that. And, 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 and second, I, I had this very, very interesting um, um, experience last week. I spent a day at Lucid Motors. Uh, do, you, do you know the Lucid cars? I mean, those are so, those are the cool, those are the coolest EVs on the road. But, but anyway, but they're all from Tesla. So the, you know, the CEO is from Tesla and, the, and so they have that mentality. And they said that when Musk was inventing the Model S, what he told his engineers was, I want a car that people will buy despite that it's an EV. So in other words, I'm just buying a car that's so cool. I love it. It happens to be an EV. That's that is what that is what the car companies need to need to do. It's, uh, so, so just to close that out, I uh, I don't think I, I, the 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 early uh, adopters buy cars because they're buying electrics because they're electrics. I don't think that's the mainstream buyer. So it has to be. Um, uh, that they're buying a car and it happens to be electric. That's why you're seeing people buy hybrids because, oh, I can drive 30 miles and not put any gas in the car. That's pretty cool. It costs me almost the same as a combustion. It looks the same, got the same bells and whistles inside. I'll take that one. That's right. And, and, from my experience uh, or from my readings, it looks like Toyota has made a strategic decision that's playing out well for them. And are there others that are in that hybrid sector that sort of are in a better positioned? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hyundai. Hyundai is a is a real player in this. Um, you know, the South Koreans and and they they they've come out of nowhere with with um, electrics, they get really, really good um, marks and and hybrids, a, um, a number of hybrids, and they're coming out with a lot more. Volvo also um, has some good cars, but 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 mainly you're and 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 the and the and the and the, and the Chinese, of course, BYD um, has every car, every kind of car, every model under the sun, um, and competitively priced. Yeah. You know, what was fun? I went to the auto show. Haven't been to the auto show in the city. Uh, the, the New York? The New York ones uh, just recently. And they had demo rides with electric cars in, in the first floor, bottom floor. I was like, oh, my God, this could never be done before. You yeah. know, there could never be demos inside the building with combustion engines. So I thought that was really they had something outside for Jeep. That was really uh, interesting to have a nice selection of cars doing demos at an auto show. Well, 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 so did you do it? I did it. Yeah. We took the, the clip, the shortest line was the Volkswagen, which is fine. It was all good. The ID4. Yeah. 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 I wasn't impressed by that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not the top one, but that's why the line was shortest. <laughs> yeah. They need to, I, th I think that they may end up okay. Volkswagen because they're Volkswagen. Right. And the, the, the Germans, by the way, you know, they have that, engineering mentality yeah. and uh history right and 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 in fact the car the first commercial car was invented in germany of course in the 19th century so they re and they have this on their brain i mean they know that and they're proud of it so i think that they'll do well eventually and 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 and, and you know who else mercedes gets good marks they they don't have hybrids but their electric cars get get good marks but you know what they're doing it's like when you go for an ice cream uh, at at a parlor, you know, and you you get a sundae and you put uh, uh, nuts and cherries and uh, and and the fudge and you know everything, you know, it's all piled on. That's what they. That's what the Mercedes. They you, you get inside it and it's just too much. Like everyone who gets in that car because. You know what did they do? They they wanted to show that they could, you know, hey, we have the tech, right? So that's what they. So anyway, they'll 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 relax, and it's like it's like you know when when a teenage girl discovers lipstick, 
you know, it's like that. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> um, so, all right. So right now, I remember we spoke last, you said 2025 is going to be the year with all the models released, all the variety you could have, and the pricing is going to be very competitive. And so talk to us about that date. Is that Has that changed because of the dynamics? Yes. 2027 is the new 2025. So uh, I've, I've written about this and uh, what you've had, you know, j just to catch up here, you have had all of the automakers, except for the Chinese, but including Tesla, uh, slow down. Um, and, you know, and that's because we, I'm sure we talked about this. Did we say that, did we talk about how we have a supply signal and not a demand signal? Right. So we, we had uh, everyone talking about, I'm putting out, I'm spending this amount of money. I'm putting out 30 models in 2025. That's why. But we were missing. We didn't, we hadn't heard from the consumer yet. Were they, and now we have the demand signal. We know, right? So that that's why. So uh, 2025 was the convergence point. Everyone, really everyone, except for the Chinese, have pushed their timelines ahead to 2027. And, and um, you know, I, I think, I, you know, the tone, I, I feel like the tone that we're talking about today also is one of inevitability. But I don't think it's inevitable, right? Uh, electrification is not inevitable, right? It uh, like it's it's um, it 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 has to be that um, that uh, maybe electrification is right where you get you know hybrids, plug-in hybrids, but full electrics. You know, you could say that the Chinese are going here anyway. I think that, you know, and, and the Europeans have this year 2035, by which time everything is supposed, all new cars are supposed to be electric. I think that timeline is going to slip just like it, it, it has slipped here. So, um, so let's say that, um, that, uh, you know, 27 is the new 2025. It could slip to 2030. Uh, what if Trump wins? Right. And, 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 uh, you know, he has said, that he wants to uh, repeal, he won't be able to repeal, but he can uh, slow down. He can gum up the IRA, uh, the other, you know, the other incentives uh, that will slow down, you know, the whole the whole process. And uh, you know, maybe that's healthier, right? I mean, that that the car companies need to get better. Um, yeah, and it takes time. I mean, you know, development cycles it really does take time. Now, what about some people have talked about the environmental impact, right? We all talk about the environmental benefits of electric, but the battery production, the cost of that, the cost on the environment, what's the reality there? I'm still confused about what's better for the environment. Yeah, so we we have, uh, or, or I, when I say we, I mean the human race or the UN or you know whomever, uh, Europe uh, ha have decided that, um, that uh, climate change is the is the greater um, scourge than the mayhem to um, you know to our uh, um, visual environment right right you know digging up the soil you know dig, you know digging up stuff at a scale that we never have for any reason um, and you know that that's probably right. But 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 it is it's a it's a big environmental cause dig, digging up the metals. But something ab about this, um, you know the 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 you know the the history of economic substitutes. So there there are uh, just in this five year period, right? It was um, it was it it became a thing like a zeitgeist uh, about cobalt mined in the Democratic Republic of uh, Congo, La uh, child labor and environmental cost. And, uh, and, and the uh, EV industry as a, as, a, as a whole stopped wanting to use cobalt in their batteries. The batteries started, started to be ma made with much less, co almost no cobalt, substituted it with nickel. And now, uh, 
the, there's an incredible surplus of cobalt on the mark because they they're still mining it in uh, uh, basically the, the the DRC is in trouble now right because because you know, stop it. it means that there can be substitutes two years ago the price of lithium went up eight times suddenly you saw you uh, you saw the development of the sodium battery sodium requires almost no mining there's sodium everywhere right it's salt and 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 uh and uh, and so it was thought that the so that sodium couldn't replace lithium because its energy density is too um isn't there isn't there and you need much more so the batteries are much heavier and and the car you know the uh driving range would be much less the chinese through their brute force uh innovation uh, methods, you know, where they put a million engineers on one project, they figured it out. Suddenly they have sodium ion batteries that will take you 200 miles on a charge. It's not as far as lithium, but 200 miles, that's still a lot. And, uh, and it's cheap, dirt cheap, right? It's sodium, right? And, but, but, but anyway, but, then, but then last year, so that was 2022, then last year, the price of lithium plunged by 90%. So because of that, then sodium went, went out the window. But it just shows you, again, substitutes. So we started out, you're asking about the uh, you know, environmental degradation. And I'm saying that this will be figured out. Okay, so that will be figured out. And then disposal will be figured out as well, correct? Was that yeah. an issue? Or is that... You, you mean recycling, right? Yeah. Because, because they're recycling. Batteries are recycled, right? So there, so there are um, most most of the stuff inside of battery uh, is recycled. There are two big um, already two like big recycling companies in in the United States: Lifecycle and Redwood Materials. So they're ready, you know. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Okay. So. I know you've written about a 600 mile battery or a 600 mile vehicle. Where are we on that sort of um, scale or, you know, what, what's the timeline for, you know, uh, distance? Uh, yeah. 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 Um, so there are, so um, Lucid, Lucid Motors that, you know, they, they, they have a car that goes 520 miles on a, on a charge. So 520 miles, if, if you're driving 70 miles an hour, that's seven hours. So do you need to drive more than seven hours? I mean, probably you didn't. You, you, I mean, you got to pee at some point, right? And so you get out while you're peeing, you can charge, right? So that is actually enough, enough miles. But, but, but what's ha happening, but that, that is super, well, it uses a lot of metals. You know, when you're building a battery that size, um, it's costly. And, and, and so what we really need, uh, so, so, so we will have, we will have, you know, 350 and 400 mile batteries. And, and if you want to have a 500 mile battery, then you'll, you know, you'll, you'll buy that really expensive, something like the expensive lucid. But what if charging stations were as prevalent as gasoline stations, and there were 15, 10 or 15 minute charging, and 10 or 15 minutes, you wouldn't fill up, but you could fill up 200 miles in 10 minutes. Um, and you and you weren't worried about, like you could, we were sitting here go, oh, Steve, I got to put this podcast on hold. I forgot my wife is at the dentist. I've got to immediately go pick her up. And they said, oh, I forgot to charge last night. But you're not worried about it because you get in your car and you know that on the on the corner you can pick up a hundred mile if you know in five minutes, right? You know without a line and then go pick her up. So that that's what we need. And so if you have that, do you need five hundred miles? Yeah. No, I guess not. So, but but what is the magic number? Is it three fifty where people are going to be comfortable with, or is it just a change of behavior or comfort and the infrastructure? And when will we? When do you think we'll get to that sort of magic? you know, reality where. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have, I've always thought that 300 is the magic number 300 and above. Okay. And, 
you know, maybe people want 350 and, and I mean, this is psychology. Maybe you would argue with me and you say, no, I, Steve, I think it's, you know, for me, it's 350, right? I mean, it, it could be, uh, you know, maybe you would say 375, but I think above three, about 300. And then, and then um, uh, the deployment of charging infrastructure, this it's going to, it's going to, you know, maybe it'll be by the, tw by 2030, maybe. So that's six years from now, maybe there will be, and then, and then going, going forward and then, uh, you know, rising from there and fast, fast charge is coming. Right. So it's, uh, there are batteries there, chemistries, you want you want fast charging that doesn't degrade the battery. That's it. I mean, because you can have fast charging, but the but the cycling, right? The cycle life is uh, is um, uh, uh, is less. It degrades the battery. And the other thing, you don't just want charging stations. You want charging stations that aren't in the back part of a parking lot, in a bad part, in a bad neighborhood with people around who you're uh, afraid of and there are broken bottles everywhere. You know, like right. it has right. to be, no, no, but that's what there is right now. They have stuck these charging. Is that right? In weird places, like not protected. Like no woman would ever go there. Right. Right. You know, and you know, and you would never send you, you have daughters, you would never send your daughter to go charge up there. And so, right, they have to have them in safe places. They have to be covered. They're also in the open. What if it's raining? What if it's snowing? That's not right. And it, and it should also be, uh, while I'm charging, I want to do something. I want to buy a, a snack. So it can't just be that you stuck this machine in the middle of nothing. Right. Right. So let's talk about charging, the charging network, right? We've seen uh, a lot of car makers sort of, uh, wanting to collaborate with Tesla and make yeah. their adapters work with uh, Tesla charging stations work. And that might be a big potential opportunity. I think it already is for Tesla. Talk to us about Tesla, the two sides, right? I mean, there's so much to talk about, right? Uh, clearly uh, it's in the news. Um, the They miss numbers. Where are we with Tesla cars? Then let's talk about charging and then maybe even robots. Okay. Well, what interests you? Because there's a lot, there is a lot. What what's on your mind specifically about uh, well, Tesla? Well, the the mar the cars. I mean, I mean, there's so much talk about uh, the demand, and you know, the stock is going down, and uh, you know, yeah. So yeah. where well, are we with the with the cars? Yeah. I mean, they yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The car, but the so I'm going to pick something that I that I that I uh, uh, about the cars that that I think is notable. First, Musk has made uh, a series of blunders, a series of strategic blunders that have gotten him into this spot. So he had this run of magnificent uh, triumphs, one after the other, um, the Roadster, the S, the, the, the three, the Y, and then uh, uh, production hell, uh, the China, you know, setting up in China with 100% ownership. No one, no foreign company had 100% ownership. The Gigafactory in Berlin, inventing the Gigafactory, right? These are all triumphs. He was as late as 2020, early 2020, was still known as a fraud, right? People like routinely called Elon Musk a fraud. They call him names right now for other reasons, but at that time, you know, just about. The car company, and now you tell you go what? Like no one thinks he's a fraud, right? They, you know, the, the you know it, it, if they have complaints about something else. So, um, so he's over that hump. But what happened was, um, he in two thousand six promised, and again as he went along, and in twenty twenty was the big he promised twenty five thousand dollar car, the everyman car. I'm going to electrify the world, sustainability. We're getting off of fossil fuels, save the planet. And then we save this planet, we're moving to Mars, right? I mean, that that's what that's why uh, he created this um, uh, fan club. That's what they're all about, right? Tesla maniacs. And, um, but, but, but then uh, he, you know, uh, made a semi truck, I mean, it was cool, but how many are you going to sell of those? Is that, you know, the Cybertruck, 
you know, it's kind of weird, you know, and, and uh, you know, also with the, even with the X, right, with the gall doors, right, how many, how, you, you, you don't see many, people don't buy those, right? If he had put normal doors on that car, it's an SUV, they, you know, he would have sold. These are all these that I've named are blunders. And, and, and they're one after the other. So the last smart, shrewd thing he did was the Model Y 2019. That's five years ago. Now he has said, uh, you know, most recently it came out three weeks ago. I don't know when this uh, podcast is going to come up. So I'll, I'll, I'll say uh, in, in, in the beginning of April, uh, Reuters wrote, reported, they had sources saying he had canceled the $25,000 car. And I'm going to make robo taxis. Okay, this is full self driving cars. This is level four, no pedals, no steering wheel. You get into the car, it takes you where you want to go. Does anyone think that that the technology is there? It isn't. It isn't there. He's been saying it's there for since 2016, right? It, it, by the end of this year, we're going to have this, right? And no, you're not. You're not going to have it. And you're 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 fooling you, your, your, yourself. So when that went, you know, that was a blunder. And Wall Street responded. So you had when I say Wall Street, you had um, the, the, the analysts there. Are, I don't know how many, 20, 30 um, analysts from banks, investment banks here in the United States and and Europe and also Asia that cover and they, they have client. Right. They're investors in, in the company. I was at a uh, dinner party over the weekend. The subject of Tesla came. Every person in the room, almost every person in the room, was a Tesla investor. It's really broad. Like I'll bet all of your friends, they're all, and you, you probably too. My mother is a Tesla in, in, investor. She also participated in the conversation. Anyway, so so uh, this this dismayed a lot of people, and that those analysts wrote reports saying. Say, we don't accept this decision, right? You have to produce the Model 2. The, the Model 2, that's the popular name for the, yeah. And so he had a, a revenue call, uh, the quarterly revenue call, and he announced not that he's making the Model 2, but he said, I'm coming out as soon as the end of this year or in next year with affordable, new affordable models. He didn't name the Model 2, so it's not going to be the Model 2. But this is capitulation. This is un-Musk-like. He capitulated to the market. The thing about it is that there isn't, there is not, when you talk to insiders inside Tesla, they don't have, they haven't developed other cars apart from the ones that are already out there. And so there is, uh, and so when, when, you know, what is he really going to, what is Tesla really going to come out with at the end of this year or next year? If you, if you think it through, it'll be some derivation of the Model 3, of the Model Y. Those are cool cars. Um, the Model Y was the best-selling car of any kind on the planet last year. 1.4 million Model Ys people bought. It's like the Model T. People love that car, right? But the thing is, it came out in 2019. It's stale, right? So they're not they're not selling well this year. He needs new new models. Um, you don't want the same cheeseburger, Jim. You want you want them to say, oh no, now we're putting bacon on it, or now it comes with mayonnaise, right? So so that that's you know he needs he needs to, to do that. So uh, he so he is recovering from this blunder. Um, he uh, Musk needs to get over himself. I think Tesla is in trouble, uh, meaning it was on this track of growing high double digits, right? Remember, it was growing like fifty percent a year. Um, he will Tesla will sell fewer cars this year than it did last year. It'll be the first uh, decline since twenty ten. Fourteen years. Right. I mean, this is it's all because of this blunder. Right. He should have in 2020, he should have instead of deciding I'm not making it, I am making it. You know, fast, 
you know, on the double and it's coming out in 2024. If he had the, if he had the model two now, he would be selling three, four million cars a year. He sold two million, almost two million last year. So it was, you know, a big, a big blunder. He's having to re recover now. T uh, China is going uh, like crazy, you know, um, starting to export. China became the largest car exporter in the world last year. The largest car exporter out of nowhere, out of nowhere, right? Now, most of those are not electrics, right? Three quarters of those are combustion cars sold in Asia, but a lot of them were elect and 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 uh, growing. So um, and they're good cars, right? So I don't know. You you just said you were at the New York Auto Show. Were there any, any Chinese models there? Yeah, I didn't think I saw any, actually, or I don't recall seeing any. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, so people who do, I haven't been in one of these. You know, one of my shames. Uh, but but uh, but but a guy just told me he was in uh, China for uh, like one week ago or two weeks ago and drove the new BYDs. The, he said for, these are first rate models. Yeah, totally first rate and, and and could sell here. Yeah, well, and well, let's talk about that. Will they sell here? I mean, I thought there's I thought they were really about tariffs uh, on on Chinese vehicles uh, or around the world, right? So what, what's the state of play as far as the expansion of that industry from China? Yeah, yeah. So definitely in, in Europe, definitely everywhere else. Uh, so we do have, we have 27% tariff altogether, 25 plus two and a half, two and a half is there anyway, and then 25 for Chinese. Um, BYD has said they don't care, that, right? They, we will sell, we, we will sell and we'll still beat you. I love that attitude, <laughs> you know, that's kind of a, an American attitude, isn't it, right? We don't care either, you know, we're going to beat you anyway. And, and uh, so, okay, but there is, uh, but but there's a, uh, a, a uh, politics, right? We've got anti-China politics right now. It's bipartisan. So, you know, both both parties um, are down on, on, on China. So it'll be hard. They can cut, there's no law against them being here, but they can create this poisonous atmosphere in which it's very hard for those companies and they feel it. So they're not, you can see that they're not, you don't see, you know, a BYD showroom just to at least show it to you what they have. So, um, but Trump has now twice in two public, you know, these rallies uh, said, if I am president, China uh, won't be able to import. They think they're going to import. This is him talking. They're going to import their cars into the United States, making them in Mexico avail of the uh, the uh, advantageous tariff structure for doing so. Uh, I'm going to slap any name some e enormous, but they can make their cars here in the United States using American labor, he try uh, American labor. He trotted out that if he's president, Chinese cars will be made in the United States. And you could see Trump doing that. So he has said this twice. And so it could happen. Like it could, I, I, I think it will. So I, I think Chinese uh, batteries and components are going to end up in, in, in the United States, part of the, part of the supply chain, because we're not ready yet. We aren't ready and we need the Chinese components. We need to climb down from our high horse, stop being arrogant and uh, xenophobic and invite the Chinese into the United States to teach us how to make batteries. Yeah, we, we have to do that. And there and it, it'll be under under our rules, right? You have to use American labor. The uh, components in the batteries have to be made either in the U.S. or a U.S. ally, right? That that group of countries. I think there there are twenty of them, and uh, and and so on, right? And, and tech transfer, right? Know how transfer, right? America, we build 
an American workforce that knows how to make these batteries. Then we're on a level playing field and then let's race. That is so interesting how you frame that, Steve. Um, because we have, I mean, Tesla's, you, you know, created, has batteries, right? So don't we have the know-how? But there's, what's, what's the difference? Yeah, yes and no, because they made batteries, but the know-how is in the cell. It's at the cell level. So it's taking uh, all, all of those metals, knowing, first of all, knowing how to, so you, you have, you know, nickel, manganese, and cobalt, and then lithium, mining them, and then turning those metals into, uh, you know, the first order chemical. And then there are a bunch of other stages in which that chem chemistry is refined, 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 until it's ready, uh, battery grade, then make a cell, right? And that is a skill. All of those things I said are a skill um, and not, it's not like making fried eggs, right? So the people who know how to do this, they all say like the Chinese are the masters and, and South Koreans also know how to do this. And well, all those things, they, it's the Chinese who know how to do that. The South Koreans know how to make cells. Japanese do Panasonic, right? Because they're Tesla's partner and the China, Chinese are the best. We don't know how to make cells. So even though Tesla made the battery packs, Panasonic provided the cells. That's, so that's right. And, and so if we didn't get their help, how many years would it, would, would it take for us to catch up? Is it five years? It, it would be in the 2030s. It would be in the 2030s and it would be... Um, because you can catch up in terms of the know-how. Maybe you can catch up relatively quickly. It's learned on the factory floor, right? These are things that we used to be an expert. Innovation happens because you're making things over and over and over again. And the guy on the, on the line says, hey, wait, 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 this is messing up. Why don't we try this, right? And iteration, iteration. So that you have to have that process play out, but then you have to scale up uh, to the level that the Chinese are, because that's where the economies yeah. come from, the efficient. But I, I don't know how long, you, you, you know, it used to be thought that it, that it takes four years uh, from uh, concept to vehicle for a, uh, for a car to be made. The Chinese have shrunk that to like to 18 months. Amazing. Amazing. Now, what about the other car uh, makers? You know, give us a sort of, your <clears throat> perception or the reality and and talk real quickly about apple you know what what's your insight into why they didn't move ahead with that do you have any if you have any and then you we obviously say, see uh was it a samsung car there's other or um other you know electrics electronics companies you know making cars what's what's your take on that and then the the incumbents around the world yeah so i think that um, look, we're not inside inside Apple, uh, but we can kind of speculate, probably smartly, that they they just didn't think that they could produce uh, a car uh, with uh, diff Apple like differentiation that would give them the margin that they were looking for, and so they just said, "Screw it, let's go bowling." Um, you know, and, and, uh, and, but meanwhile, Xiaomi and Huawei, the two Chinese makers have come out with electric cars, smartphone makers. And supposedly the Xiaomi is totally cool. They have 80,000 orders in the first 24 hours. All right. And, and uh, I mean, I mean, that's China. So they, they, they have that, that huge population, but that's, that is I'm, I'm glad you raised that because that's one of the most interesting uh, dynamics in electric cars. Why, why do people buy electric car? What, what's going to make me want that? And the, um, it's the bells and whistles. So the, the, the Chinese, Chinese consumers are tech crazy. Supposedly, you know, they get, they want, everything and and when i say everything like things you wouldn't like they want to have karaoke the cars all the evs have karaoke i mean okay we sing in our cars but do we want to have a microphone <laughs> i don't know you know but they they um just 
any kind of thing you can think of and not think of that wouldn't that would or would not be in a car they're putting it in the car and uh and then and and the, and the china that that's what the chinese consumers look for mm -hmm. those little bells and whistles so so xiaomi uh you know infotainment infotainment is is huge you know 30 speakers you know every part of the car has got a speaker in it bose you know made by bose and 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 uh you know any kind of movie any kind of game um you know why are they doing that they're driving you no know? they want to drive while they're and and also they're 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 more risk the the chinese car makers are more risk taking in in, in terms of putting um new technologies in the cars and on the on the road so they're having not full self driving yet but they've got adats you know this uh assisted driving what do we want we we want to be able to do you work from home i work from home right is that is that correct but there are people who aren't like us they they drive into the office maybe in you know maybe from your where you live in to new york city every day up and back for their whole life how aggravating is that, right? With that bumper to bumper traffic and all of that. And then you have that crazy thing in New Jersey on the freeway where you have to stop before you get on the freeway and then go from zero to 60 in three seconds or you're going to get bolt run over by someone. Why don't you guys have regular on-ramps? Anyway, so so uh, so anyway, but it is, it is aggravating. But what if... Um, right, you don't have to have full self driving. What if if you had a driving system that was just freeway bumper to bumper, right? That you could like take your hands off the wheel. You didn't have a camera in the mirror that was looking at your eyes, which is what they have now to make sure you're watching the road. The sensors on the steering wheel. Do you have your hands on the wheel? No, I don't want my hands on the wheel. I don't want to look on the road, and I. I I want to be able to hang out, read my newspaper, send some emails, flirt with my wife, you know, do whatever. Um, that's what that. So these car that that we're not very far from that. But I think I think the the Ch Chinese are already there. Yeah. Um, all right. And the other incumbent uh, automakers, Ford, oh, good. Motors. Yeah. What's your take on those? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. So. <clears throat> First, you know, starting with who I think is cool, Volvo is cool, Volvo and Polestar. But who owns that? Those, those are both owned by Chinese, uh, by by Geely. But it's still Volvo. Volvo. It's still made in Sweden, you know. And and uh, Pol Polestar also. Um, Hyundai. I already mentioned Hyundai, but I want to say that Hyundai gets very good marks. Um, uh, Rivian. We didn't mention Rivian. Uh, you know, totally cool trucks. The other day I saw their new one, which is one level smaller. It knocked my socks off. It It is so cool looking. Like I wanted the, and I really hate pickup trucks because I think people buy them like to show off and, and to be big, you know, uh, like my, my brother has two of them, two F F one fifties. He doesn't tow anything. He doesn't have anything. I, I said, what do you have in the back? And the, what if I have to, uh, you know, what if I have to, um, you know, uh, uh, cart something? Some No, you don't cart anything anywhere. You have a pencil in the back. And, you know, he just wants it, cause it cause, because it looks cool. But this Rivian, it was cool. And it was like like a compact, a more compact. So uh, So they, but they're in trouble. They're in trouble because... These are, so they and Lucid started late. So uh, Musk delivered the Model S in 2012 and he delivered in 20, the beginning of 2017, the Model 3 and then uh, the Model Y in 2019. So he went through all, you know, pr production hell was 2018. So he, he went through, and by the way, the company almost died. Remember, it almost died. So they're starting now basically with all of it, it's too late, right? It's too, you, you're trying to go through all of those things that it took Musk ten years. You're trying to do all that in two, right? It's very expensive. So they 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 are in production hell. 
They are in the Valley of Death, also called the Valley of Death. Um, so let's see if they make it. You know, it's mm -hmm. going to be very tough for them. Uh, Ford made the error, NGM did also, of thinking that they could just put batteries into their combustion cars. Well, they couldn't, and people didn't. You know, they, they cost more, sometimes considerably more. It's just, why? Why do I want that car? You know, and and so they they need they they need to get better. You know, I I love Jim Farley. He has put together a first rate team of people from places like Tesla, like Apple, um, who can do it. But it'll take them time. So so maybe what Jim, what we're gonna see is you know VW, you know BMW, Mercedes, um, Ford, BM, uh, Ford, G, G, you know. The, the the major car makers, if they can get through this decade, ha, you know, be set in this world with hybrids and electrics that people want to buy in in the in five years, in the end of the of the of the 2020s. But not everyone is gonna make it. Yeah. No, it'll be interesting to watch. <clears throat> this is a, <clears throat> a great discussion, uh, Steve. I'm so glad we were able to catch up. You make me so much smarter and all of us smarter in this field. Before we go, when do you think we'll have a true self-driving car that could take us anywhere? This is a good question. The first answer that I have is we may never have that. And the reason is safety. Right. So there are all, always edge cases and you see them every day when you're driving your, your, your car. There's something that happened when you were on the road and you were able to respond to it, slam on your brakes, brakes, swerve, whatever, because you out of the corner of your right saw that, you, you know, you have, you know, your, your many years of ex experience, RoboTaxi, will RoboTaxi be able to see that thing? So, so we're worried about about that. But if it does, if it does happen, uh, uh, the earliest, the 2030s. Got it. Great answer. All right, this has been great. Steve, thanks for your time. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please like it, leave a review, and subscribe. See you soon.